Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Mr. Robotic Warfare, and I'd like to show you a new setup that I came up with today that does the Covrex enrichment process. Uh, so the first thing that I'd like to mention is that you'll probably see some big black bars on YouTube right now. I'm recording this on an ultra-wide monitor, which is what I play Factorio on. It's very pretty. Um, but if you have a normal monitor, that means that YouTube will probably cut off your video. So I'm sorry for that. Um, but now into the design. This is really cool. I like this a lot. Uh, so the main components of it fit inside this power pull. The insertion method of the other stuff is outside of that, but you can easily cover all of this with a substation and you wouldn't even need that. And I believe this is beaconable. Uh, you can just stick some on the sides here. Um, but also, the most important thing and the reason why I like this a ton is because it's exactly three wide and it is pretty much for all intents and purposes infinitely tileable. So if we, if we took a blueprint here, we could just keep stringing these on across and we'd have absolutely no problems at all. Uh, so let's go ahead and explain how this works a little bit. So we have our Covrex process, right? It takes 40 uranium-235 and 5 uranium-238 and we'll turn it into 41 of the 235 and 2 of the 238. Uh, so the first thing that happens is that these, these components are pulled out and stuck into this chest. So these components right here, these two stack inserters and this steel chest, they serve no intelligent purpose. That's just transporting the items out and into this chest. Then from here, a couple of different things happen. So this chest is just reading the contents all the time. This decider combinator is saying when everything equals zero, so this is everything, when everything equals zero, which is essentially the same thing as saying when the chest is entirely empty, we're going to output one just coal. Let's call it one coal. And that coal uh, is put on this green line right here, and it goes to this belt. So it says that this belt is only on if there is one coal. So the belt is only on if there is nothing in the chest. Now, what does that mean? The other thing here is that we are also reading the belt's contents, and on the red wire, we've got that string up here. Uh, so that'll matter in a second. So right now, let's just concentrate on this. We're saying that that's going to go there. So we're always reading this. And then, once the products are put in, we'll have 41 in of the 235 and 2 of the 238. So this filter inserter is connected directly to the chest as well. And it says uh, it'll, it'll swing only when there's a greater number of uranium-235 than 40 which means that it's going to swing exactly once. We've overridden the stack size here to say just one. It's only taking the uranium-235. So it'll essentially swing once and pull out the one extra that we don't need. When it, when it puts it on this belt, however, that is going to change things. Because even after the first items got into this chest, this is no longer true. So this belt has stopped. So as this inserter is transferring items over, the belt stops. And then this inserter will swing and put it down on the stopped belt. And what that means is that the belt is not moving, and there's an item on it, and it can read the belt's contents. So as long as there's an item on there, what this stack inserter will do is we'll say, as long as there's exactly one of the uranium-235, it will start swinging. So what that means is you'll have the contents pulled out, put in here, all of them will pile up in here. This will swing once and put a 235 down. And then uh, let's actually get this going so we can see um, by the time I'm done explaining here. So there's five of you. And we'll just toss that in and take out the extras. Um, so as it, it, it swings once, it puts it down on the belt here. That'll stay put. This will keep swinging until this chest is empty uh, because it'll put in all the uranium that it needs. And then this belt will go on and you'll get your extra one up here. So this is the output side. So here's the interesting thing to note. If you just put normal uranium-238 on here, it's going to fill it up to a surplus as much as possible. So we've got one extra condition here. We've got the red wire going from this chest to here, saying that it's only allowed to work if there are no 238s in the chest. So what that means is that we've overridden the stack size here to two. So even as it's running, it's going to fill up to, I believe, what, 10 or something like that? It's going to go up to 10, 11, 12 thereabouts. Um, because we've set it low down. If you if you don't set it down, if you set it to 10, rather, um, it'll actually go to 19. So this will only swing once this has put its extras in. So we'll see this in a second here. 
Uh, I can actually just... Uh, I've missed my window, sort of, here, but I can just put a ton of these down. So you can see it's transferring the stuff over, it puts it down, it holds it on the belt till it puts everything in, and then it lets it go. It's a little bit fast there, but you can see that we've still got the 7 uranium in there, and we won't fill it, so it'll go to 11, essentially, depending on whether it's even or odd. But what happens here is that the uranium-235, since it comes over first, will go in first, it'll get a craft going, so this will drop down to, what, 6? Uh, and it could be overfilled to 11 again, so it'll put these two in first and then pull out more. Um, so theoretically, you could set this down to 1 and it would work. Um, and it will work better, rather, because you'd always be capped at 10. Um, but 2 is slightly more efficient, and I think you could get away with 3, but I'm not sure. Um, so the other question you may ask is, well, if we've got these all tiled next to each other here, what happens if we've got some extra 235 that comes over? Well, it'll just cause a little blip here, and it'll just mean that this could move, but there's going to be nothing in this chest. Now, on the off chance that something does happen, and you've got, say, a backup of these, um, when it's in operation, it won't let you do that. Um, because th the minute that it has items in this chest, this belt will stop. So you would, I, I believe, if not ever, the only time that you would run into an issue with this is if the first items hit that chest in the same exact tick, then another 235 is going across here. Uh, I think that just doesn't happen. Um, and if it did, you know, that's a very difficult thing to test. Um, but this is a really, really nice setup that I like a lot. So you can just have your excess 238 coming off of here. Say we can just stack insert onto the belt here, have that running as far down as you want. And then you just have this stuff. And then you would, uh, I probably don't have the components to make, yeah, more stuff right now. But as you can see, we could just paste down a couple more of these. We've got most of the stuff we need. Um, but you've got this nice little output lane, and like I said, it shouldn't matter at all that there's any issues here, because this would just blip on past, right? And the, the chance of these happening, as we've established, are essentially none at all. Um, but that's the setup. I should have a link to the uh, this little blueprint here in the description. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope this can be useful to you. So uh, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you later.